All right, I'm here with a little Gobi, and uh, this is going to be a combination of Gobi's uh, video on how to help him and his roadmap to success. Now, uh, Gobi had, what was it called again? A meningioma a benign one. Okay. Um, I'm not going to try to say that. I'm a dog psychologist, not a uh, medical person. Uh, but basically, he uh, went blind, and uh, his eyesight is hopefully coming back a little bit. But he's doing a lot of pacing. And uh, so his guardians are doing a lot of things to help him with uh, quality of life. He is 15? 14 and a half. 14 and a half. And so, um, you know, he's a nice active dog. Uh, but after that, he's kind of, uh, you know, adjusting just like we all do when we have a medical condition or things that uh, came up. So I'm going to go over kind of a summary of the things that we talked about in this session. Um, I, uh, oh, because he does so much pacing, the, the guardian's a little bit worried that it's taxing on his joints. And so uh, fortunately when I was here, he actually went to his dog bed and he laid down and he slept for about an hour and a half, to almost two hours, which he normally does not do. Now right there, he's a little bit, that's a reverse sneeze, I believe. Um, and so I'm gonna put this at the beginning of the video so you can have this. So um, I'm concerned that he may have urinary stones. There are four types of urinary stones. Uh, some of them do not show up on an x-ray. They have to show up in an ultrasound and vice versa. So male dogs have, uh, when they have stones that actually blocks them from being able to urinate, they can go into renal failure. And look, typically when this happens, they strain to urinate. They uh, do a whole bunch of little uh, in a lot of different places because uh, the stone essentially blocks the opening. Uh, so it stops the flow of the urine. When they stop trying to go, the, flow kind of, the stone backs away, usually unless it gets wedged and then they can pee again a little bit. So um, Yorkies are one of the breeds that are more predisposed to getting a type of urinary stone. So I'd like the guardians to just have that checked out. They have a whole team of medical, doc, uh, medical uh, personnel who are helping them out. Um, and I would just have them uh, look up the, all the different stones. They are medical people, I'm not. But if that is the case, they may need to adjust his diet. Uh, may need to put him on allopurinol if it's your right stones. You wanna get down, buddy? Okay, I'm happy to let you down. So I'm big on consent. That's a, uh, right there, he just shook it off. That can be a way of uh, relieving anxiety. So I'm content to hold him as long as he wants to be helped. As soon as he kind of showed any sort of indication he wanna get down, I put him down right away, and now he can, probably can't see him on the camera, but he's basically pacing right here in front of us. Uh, now, uh, the guardians notice that he paces a little bit more, uh, well, he paces pretty much nonstop. He paces and sleeps. Um, and, uh, but they notice it's a little bit more pronounced after certain stressful situations. And so um, basically, um, I'm, I think it's more neurologic. I would invite the guardians to talk to their vet and say, hey, is this is pacing nonstop uh, a typical symptom of this uh, issue that he has? And if that is the case, then uh, we need to basically uh, ask, is that, is that something that's not only going to be pronounced the whole time? Is that something that, that should get better? Um, one of the things I talked to the guardians about is keeping a journal. Now we do this with dog behavior a lot, but um, sometimes keeping a journal can help a dog, uh, help us kind of recognize trends of a dog's uh, behavior or uh, improvement or not. Um, yeah, and he's kind of running into more things. Uh, when you have a blind dog, you really don't want to move things around. And he's, uh, they kind of map things out in their head so I kind of know where everything is in the house and moving things around, putting a box down, I can run into it. There is something called a halo. The guardian said that he really didn't, uh, didn't seem to enjoy the halo. The halo is essentially um, a tube that, uh, or a bar that goes in front of their head, and then it has two spokes that go along the side of their body, and basically when they bump into something, the, the halo bumps into it, and they feel it in the shoulder, so instead of crashing it with their head. Um, he seems to be doing a pretty good job of understanding where things are in the house, but he is a little bit of a senior dog, so sometimes we don't think as clearly when we're a little bit older than when we're younger. Um, upstairs, uh, mom has, uh, who really, really is devoted to him and loves him, is doing, uh, she's literally cooking his, him a meal on the stove right now, uh, but she's gone to sleeping on the floor with him. Now, he has accidents um, a lot, and uh, so there's puppy pads all on the floor, um, and then there's pillows against the window to try to, to make sure he doesn't, uh, you know, injure himself and knock his head into things. I would recommend getting pool noodles. They're about this wide around, and they're foam. They're about this, strips this big. And then basically, if you stack those, I would glue them or find some way to adhere them together, maybe just a band, and then put them up against and kind of have a contour, contouring around the walls of the house. Um, there are pillows up there right now, but I'm just concerned that if uh, perhaps mom's asleep, he might get stuck in one of those and create a little bit of a negative situation. Um, and you can also use pool noodles, a single one, uh, uh, there's bricks, 
in the front and there's also a, a fruit tree in the yard. And so we kind of put those around and connect those. That way he runs into them. It's, it's a soft cushioning sort of a surface, but it also helps him uh, not fall into a crevice or things along those lines. Um, so mom's right now sleeping on the floor with him. Um, and for a little while he was interacting with her, but now he's just pretty much pacing throughout the night. I would recommend that the guardians get him a bunch of belly bands. Belly bands are essentially bands for, a lot of times we use them for dogs that mark male dogs. And it goes around their pee-pee. Um, and basically they're Velcro and you can wash them. Uh, and uh, so get some that you can, they're not, uh, they're rewashable, reusable. I would probably put those on him at night. That way when he does pee and hopefully, and, well, not hopefully, but if he does have urinary stones and we uh, get a treatment for that, then maybe he's able to have a regular urinary flow and evacuate everything all at once instead of a whole bunch of little places. I don't think it's marking from what was described. I haven't seen it, but I would imagine that it's uh, related to what's going on with him. Um, so I would uh, definitely get him used to the belly bands. Now for the belly bands at first, he's probably gonna feel uncomfortable or not uncomfortable, just different. So what I would probably do is I would maybe get him used to using the lick mat first. We talked about using lick mats. Licking and chewing release the feel good endorphins for dog uh, called oxytocin and serotonin. And that actually reminds me, I'm gonna have one of the guardians do something right now while we're doing this and we'll see if he's interested. I have a little collagen stick from our friends over at Bark where these collagen is the skin under the skin. And uh, I'm gonna have her, uh, well, are you filming? Yeah. This is for you anyway, so uh, we'll already have one for you. So basically, oh, here's the label, but that's a small one. Why don't you go see if he's interested, unless he goes to his bed. But um, if he wants to chew on these, giving him a high value chew item or a lick item like a lick mat would be something that'd be beneficial to kind of keep him occupied. He's doing all these big left circles. He's only going to the left, which tells me it's neurologic. I'm sure the stress is probably related to it. Um, but basically, if we can get him some activities where he's gonna stop and focus on licking or chewing something, that might help him stop the pacing. I'm just worried, and the guardians are worried, that eventually he's gonna wear out. And uh, so he's, she's offering him the collagen stick, and he's sniffing it. He seems to be interested, and then he just, nope, he's walking away. Um, so that's okay. Um, she'll try again one or two times. And he, just like us, some people like doing jump rope. Some people don't. There's nothing right or wrong with that. Um, but he, I, I'm wondering if he's going to go to his bed. He looks like he might be ready to go to his bed again. Um, all right. So um, I'm kind of jumping around. So let me go back to the lick mat. I would order a lick mat. I would put some yogurt on because he has a dietary restrictions and put it kind of in the middle of it um, and put it kind of the first couple times, put it on it pretty high so that he, it's pretty easy for him to get to. We want to make it very easy for him to kind of under, learn how to do it. There we go. He became interested. He's chewing on the collagen stick a little bit. And a little chew and he walks off, but that's okay. Um, he might come back around, yeah. And so uh, for, the, for the collagen stick or the bully stick, since he, now that is beef, by the way. So uh, I don't know if beef is okay with him. Um, all right, but they do make, uh, I know bison is something that it's okay for him to have. And so they do have collagen st uh, bully sticks. Uh, bullies are pieces of a bull pee, pee or of an animal's pee, pee And so they do make little holders. Uh, so you can actually stick the stick in it. And I think that'd be helpful for him. So it kind of holds it for him. He might put his paw on top of it, but he can sit there and chew it. But he's not probably going to have enough strength to hold it and chew and keep himself upright at the same time. But it might be something he enjoys doing. Um, and so I would get a lick mat. I would get him used to the, using the lick mat with uh, just the, uh, whatever sort of uh, uh, yogurt that he likes. And then uh, after a while, if he really gets into it, that's something you can use to interrupt his pacing. Uh, if he will sit down and do that, that gets him a stationary activity where instead of pacing around and taxing his joints, he's sitting down. It also releases the feel-good endorphins, which make him feel good. And we're looking to improve, improve his quality of life and give him some joy and happiness. That might help aid in that regard. Eventually, if that's the case and he does like that, then we start using that for introducing other things. Like if we want to use uh, when he's eating because of strength issues, so a lot of times his guardians help hold him, uh, but he might not like that restriction. So I said so that they might want to get a pillow that's just big enough so that he can basically be standing on his toes, but he can rest his chest and his torso on that pillow so his joints are not absorbing the whole thing while he's eating food out or licking out of the lick mat. So if you use that in conjunction with a lick mat, now he's licking something, then we slide the pillow under. And he's like, okay, well, I like the licking. Okay, I can rest in this thing. Now we're sharing the positive attributes of the lick mat and having that help us introduce a new tool. Anytime we're, uh, a lot of times when we're dealing with dogs, we try to introduce multiple things at the same time. And then we don't really know which thing is the factor, which is the benefit, which is the, the attraction and all that stuff. So I try to do one thing at a time. So I might get him used to the lick mat first. 
And if he likes the lick mat, which I assume he wouldn't, the other thing you do is let him lick it off of a spoon. Um, and after a while, or you can get like a little uh, plastic container and put the, uh, that stuff in there so he licks it off there. But a lick mat, I think, would be the best vehicle for it. But if he gets into doing that, then we can use that for other things. Um, maybe we're do using a lick mat when we're, uh, well, yeah. Um, I, my brain went over a whole lot of stuff in this. I'm trying to compartmentalize this. I'm not jumping all over the place. I'm also watching him out of the corner of my eye. I know he's pacing on the far side of the room. Uh, so uh, let's talk about the journal. I'd like the guardians to get a journal and every day start to put the date at the top of the journal. And then I'd like to write down the time that they feed him. We'll come back to feeding here in a second. So the time that we feed him and how much he eats. Um, if he paces, um, started pacing, a circle was a 12 foot circumference. You can put as much as a little detail as you want. Don't go too crazy at once. I don't want you to put so much in it that you stop journaling. But uh, when, he, when does he go poop? If we feed him at a consistent time, then after a while we should be able to identify a window about a half an hour, 45 minutes when he's likely to do number two. Um, and so if we're using number, uh, we're using the belly bands when he's asleep at night and mom goes back to sleeping in the bed, he has more room to pace around. If he does have a little urinary, um, it comes out and it's kept in the, uh, uh, the belly band as opposed to being on the floor. And then if we're feeding him at consistently the same time, we know what time the poop comes. We shouldn't have to worry about any poop coming and him stepping in the poop while mom's sleeping overnight. Mom's doing a wonderful job of just rearranging her life for her dog, but we also need to take care of mom so that mom has the strength and energy and uh, enthusiasm to continue to do it. She loves him, she's continuing to do that, but we can, I think, use some tools to make sure that everybody's kind of in a good position and we're doing the best good for everybody. Um, so uh, I, I would recommend going to get a structured feeding, putting the food down, giving him an opportunity to eat it. Sometimes they're, they're comfort, uh, some dogs are social eaters. If he knows that you're there, you might sit there and eat something first. He can't see you, probably hear you very well, but they have a very good sense of smell. So he might smell, if you, especially if you're eating something that has a little bit more of an aroma, and that might make him feel a little bit more likely to eat. As soon as he walks away from the food, as long as he's eaten a little bit, then we, I usually like to take the food up, and then we don't feed him again until the next meal. The guardian's here feeding three times a day. Um, for dogs that are not, uh, that are having anxiety or stress, the more that we can provide regularity and a schedule, the more comfort and confidence they get from coming from that. And a lot of us as humans, we have a hang up because we think of love as affection, or food as affection. And so, uh, but for dogs, they really don't get as much enjoyment out of food uh, as they do for us because they just don't have the taste buds. They only have about 12 or 13% of the taste buds that we have. So if you've ever eaten a dog cookie, it has almost no flavor in it. So they like to eat it for the volume of it, but they don't really so much like to eat it for the, for the flavor. And so if we can get him on a structured feeding schedule and after he walks away, we're letting you eat as much as you want to eat. And then maybe he walks away, we invite him a second or a third time, but after whatever the designated amount of time is, then we put the food up and then he doesn't get uh, food again until the next meal. Eventually hunger starts kicking in. And in his case, we have biologic rhythms that are beneficial for us. And so it can help keep things moving on a regular basis. It can also help, um, like I said, with the confidence issues, but it also might help with his, bio, uh, with his biology in terms of his metabolism and eating on a regular basis. I'm currently trying to lose weight, so I'm trying to eat five times a day. I have breakfast, a couple hours later I have an apple, then I have lunch, and a couple hours later I have a snack, and then I have dinner. And by keeping that going, it I have more energy throughout the day, and also it helps my body kind of get into that rhythm. For him, you know, he's pacing so much, he needs that energy. And if we have food access 24-7, sometimes we forget to eat because it's always there. And I'm, with what he's got going on, it's probably a safe bet that he's not as sharp, uh, uh, thinking as sharply as he has in it maybe in the, when he was in his optimal levels. So again, those are tools that we can use to help bring him a little bit of comfort. Each one of these things by itself, is it going to be a huge thing? No. But if we did two points of percentage points of happiness here and, and three points of quality of life improvement there, those things can add up. Maybe we get to 25 or 30% of benefit. Uh, he's over there. Um, and so uh, mom is now ready to feed him. And so uh, and he's doing his pacing. Now on the, getting back to the journal, anytime that he sleeps, I would absolutely write that down. And that's one of the things we're looking for. Right now he only really sleeps Oh, look at that. He, uh, he might want to go to the bed. He actually went to the bed and he lifted a leg. He missed it and they kept on circling, but watch and see if he, he'll do it on his own. But he's circling back to his bed and we'll see. Um, all right, for the journal, when he does go to sleep, write down the time that he goes to sleep. Um, when he has um, anything that's noteworthy. 
If we have a lot of people around, write down people who are going over. Um, uh, if uh, what time we give him his meds. Um, uh, anything that we're doing that's noteworthy, at the end of the day, then we kind of maybe give a letter grade and a quick little summary. He said he did this, he did that. Um, but then we can look, how much pacing was he doing throughout the day? How much downtime did he get? Um, you know, and things along those lines. And we start seeing a trend of he's eating a little bit better. He is sleeping a little bit better. He's pacing shorter, smaller circles or less frequently or whatever it is. And that information can help you with your doctor so your doctor can see maybe the gabapentin that we're giving him, or maybe we need to up the dosage or down the dosage or more frequently or less frequently. I think that um, the, uh, we, the Guardians have also introduced a, uh, a uh, uh, thunder shirt, um, which is kind of using the concept of swaddling a baby. The constriction can help some animals and humans feel more comfortable. We have weighted blankets for this reason. And so, but because he does have accents, I would recommend getting a feminine uh, uh, pad and then basically putting that around his peepee underneath the thunder shirt. So if he does have that little accident, we don't have to watch the thunder shirt every single day. Um, and just check that periodically. It should, urine's pretty easy to identify. Um, but that way we have a little protection and uh, that way we don't have to wash that so much. I think that um, I would also journal when you put the thunder shirt on, how long it was on him for. And then you start seeing, you know what, maybe we need to put it on him for an hour and a half twice a day. If he starts fussing at it or tearing at it or biting at it, he's saying he wants to remove it. And so if that's the case, then we know we put it on at 10.30 in the morning. At 11.49, he started struggling to get out of it. So we, okay, what's that duration? Then the next day, we try to do it 20 minutes less than that duration. We would rather take it off and have him, than have him feel like he needs to get it off. Um, and so basically, um, the snuffle mat, or the, uh, not the snuffle mat, the thunder shirt, right now he's getting gabapentamin twice a day. So maybe we can kind of alternate that. Maybe we have the snuffle, uh, the uh, thunder shirt on, and then a couple hours later he gets the gabapentamin, helps him sleep, he stops pacing a little bit, we put the thunder shirt on, and then we start noticing those trends and we come up with a rhythm that gives him the most benefit or joy in life. Um, now, uh, I had suggested potential aqua therapy, but he's not a huge fan of, uh, of the water. Now, a lot of times we think of multiple things. We grab the dog and put him in a bathtub. And while you're picking me up and putting me in there, I don't have any choice. It's too deep. I don't like that much water. The surface is slick. I don't feel like I can grip. There might be three or four things going on. So uh, for aqua therapy, we put dogs in a life vest, so it's, uh, it's buoyant. So we might just uh, do that, and maybe when he's having his lick mat, we put the little life vest on it and let him have that walking around the house when he's pacing or he's eating his food or he's doing his lick mat. So he's not thinking about uh, having this on and he gets gradually used to it. Maybe he's only wearing it for two minutes a day, then it, three minutes a day, five minutes a day. And aqua therapy might not be anything for him, but I think because of uh, he's pacing so much, having something where we can take low, low uh, stress on the joints and add a little bit of resistance without the stress on the joints in an aqua tank or even in the bathtub might be beneficial. Um, now there are uh, foldable uh, dog uh, pools that I have showed the guardians on, uh, on, face, uh, on Amazon. And so basically what I would do is probably put just, at first I would just get him going in there. Now he really likes the salmon, freeze dried salmon treats that I got. So maybe we make him a little bit of a trail of those that go up to the pool. And then he kind of walks, we could fold one of the sides down, he walks into the pool with no water in there. So he just gets used to walking on the slight incline, going in there, but he's getting the treats as he's going in, and he's choosing to go in on his own. After we've done that five or six or eight times, then maybe we do, uh, and maybe less than that, as long as he's comfortable doing it, and maybe we have him walk up there, and then he goes in there, and there's the pillow, and he gets to eat his food. We create a positive. Um, eventually, if that's the case, we want to do aqua therapy, then maybe after doing this for a couple of days to a week or so, we put just a tiny little bit of water just so the bottom of his paws are touching a little mildly warm water when he steps in the pool. And we let him pace around in there and he just gets used to walking on that warm water. And then if he doesn't seem to be detrimental, it seems to be okay, maybe we start adding a little bit more water, a little bit more, and gradually he gets used to going in there and the water's up to here, up to here, up to here. It might be the sort of thing where aqua therapy would be beneficial, but talk to your physical therapist. The physical therapist might say, no, it's not gonna be really beneficial. That's his, uh, I'm, not, that, I'm a little out of my league in this one. Now, I uh, also recommend getting a cooling mat because I think that he might find it uh, comfortable. Dogs have a fur coat and sometimes they wanna lay on tile or uh, wood or something like that, even though it doesn't look as comfortable for us, but the temperature is more important to them. 
Um, let me see. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Um, I, or, I recommend The Guardian's already the Tellington Touch, the T Touch. It's a book that a woman wrote that basically shows you how to pet your dog in a lot of different ways using almost doggy acupressure. Um, and so if the Guardians can find five or six places he really enjoys being petted. Um, then they, when the physical therapist comes over, may say, hey, you know, he really likes it when you pet him with a slow circle on his chest. Do you think before you can get, get started, you can kind of pet him a little bit like that? Right now, he has all these medical people that are working with him and they're trying really hard to help him. But at the same time, he might not necessarily recognize that, that that's there to help. He doesn't like the physical therapy or whatever the case may be or the stranger or however it is. So if the person starts with a little bit of, uh, yep, I, good rate. Mom just got to recognize he's done eating. He wants to get back down and pacing. And so we're just going to put him right down. Um, and so if the medical person maybe starts off, and that's another anxiety shake. I like how he turned before he ran into that. Um, but right there, I'm watching him right now. He's walking, his circles are much tighter right now after eating. They're very similar to the tightness of the circles that we observed when he was outside going potty. So now this might be an indication he has to potty. Going, uh, having the bathroom right after they eat is a very normal thing. It's one we recommend for puppies. But again, this is some, the sort of thing you put in your journal. After eating, I notice his circle gets much smaller. That might tell the, uh, the doctor with uh, neurologic experience, hey, the feeding is activating certain things in his cerebral cortex or whatever it is, and there might be some benefits to that. So again, maybe the doctor's like, well, since there's a benefit to that, maybe we want to feed him five times a day in shorter meals. But again, we're doing it the regularity so that he understands what time it's coming, and there might be a benefit to that. So again, that's, those would be questions for the doctor, but I think keeping that journal might help you guys tr track his progress and I would also make sure you highlight the things that he does that he enjoys. He had some bounce in his steps when he ran, ran in the yard. Um, he uh, you know, really enjoyed doing this or doing that. So we can actually identify the things that happened before that or the things that are happening that he enjoys so we can recreate them more often. Now, uh, we, um, mom has a daughter who lives nearby that is, has a house that's a little bit quieter than the house that's here. Now, this is his house. And part of uh, the guardians were wondering if maybe he laid down when I was here just for about two hours because maybe he'd been in her house for two hours, two days. It could be, could be multiple factors, but again, journaling will help us identify those. But since he seems to enjoy and, and have some relaxation over there, I think it would be a bad idea for him to start maybe having a regular schedule. Maybe he goes over that house uh, once, uh, once a week, twice a week. Maybe he goes over a half day twice a week, whatever it is. And I would have the, her do a journal as well. So you start seeing, you know, when, when our, we're at the daughter's house, he paces for this much longer or this much shorter. And maybe that they notice that, you know, when the house is quiet, this is going on, that's going on. Again, that information gives us, you know, I keep on thinking he's going to go back to that dog bed and lay in it. We're going to talk about that in a sec. But again, having that data allows us to know which one is better or not as good for him. Now, uh, there's some calming dog beds that are kind of the shape of a donut and they have basically like almost like tassels of fur that are coming out. And a lot, I think for him, having the one uh, that we uh, showed online might help him. I would start that off by using the salmon or a treat that he really likes. Chop that salmon in little bits, not so tiny that he can't get them, but you know, maybe small pieces, maybe about a third of the size of a pea, and then start sprinkling them in the tassels of that dog bed. What we'd like him to do is just you know, maybe lead a trail of it going up to the dog bed. He goes to the dog bed and he smells some more and he gets in there and now he's using his nose. Dogs are scent animals. And so the more that we can get the dog using its nose and finding treats, we boost his confidence, we give him something to do, and we're preventing him from motion as well as doing the big circles. But again, ask your doctor. There might be nothing wrong with him pacing in those circles, but there might be benefits to giving him a, a lick mat or feeding him uh, food out of that dog bed that way to keep him occupied and prevent him from doing those circles. Maybe that helps his brain. Again, this is not in my wheelhouse, so uh, there we go. He just went back up in his dog bed. He's uh, he's thinking about laying down. Now he's thinking about it. He's doing a small circle on his dog bed. And nope, he's off and running again. But again, the fact that he's going up there tells me that he, he wants to. And so it might be a benefit. Um, I would, uh, yeah. So that other, the, the other, the, that dog bed is supposedly calming and comforting because those tassels, he can really sink himself in there. Um, now he's eaten and you might want to consider maybe put, he hasn't had the gab today. Maybe this would be a good time to maybe put that, uh, uh, the thunder shirt on him and see if maybe that would provide him with a little bit of relief and maybe he puts his thunder shirt on and he goes and lays down. And again, so if we notice a combination of those things because of our journal, then we know we have an identify. All right, he went back to the dog bed again and he crumbed right back out. <laughs> and so, uh, but again, these are things you're gonna catch. Uh, oh, he stopped and he's looking around. 
Um, also, the other thing I noticed is the house, and maybe just because I'm here, but the house is quiet, um, except for human voices. Um, sometimes music, especially classical music or easy listening music can be really helpful. Uh, here in Los Angeles, I often recommend KCRW's uh, uh, Collective 24. It's a stream that has no commercials. That's kind of mellow, down-tempo music. But that might be something that might be helpful for him as well. Music can be a soothing uh, 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 construct or uh, stimulus that might be beneficial for him. Um, I also noticed um, the guardian's doing a great job of offering her a hand in front of him. Just don't pet him on, start petting him on top of his head, try not to. Uh, now when she's picking him up, she's picking him up, but one of the things I always like to do is hold the dog, so if the dog's head is here, and this is the tail, I try to hold it in that position, and I have my hand underneath it, almost between their rear legs, or sometimes under, they're on top, and then I'm putting my hand on the dog's chest, the dog's head would be here, and I put this hand underneath the dog's rear legs. So that way, so your other, uh, put your left hand under his legs, under his back legs, and then I kind of tilt the dog towards me so that he can kind of lean into me or put his legs up against my chest. And for some dogs, that helps them feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, now I would, I'm gonna have bad camera angle right here. But I also, I know he just ate, but salmon, whoops, he likes the salmon, so I'm giving him a little piece of salmon. There we go. And uh, so anytime you're trying something with the dog, we like to pair it with a treat or something the dog likes. So he has a big chunk of salmon, he's chewing it while they're putting the thunder vest on it, which is kind of a lot of strips this way or that way. And you want it somewhat, you don't want it super tight, but you do want it snug. That's the whole point of it. That's why there's multiple Velcro strips. Um, but when you're doing that sort of thing, he's like, what are you guys doing all this weird stuff on? So if I'm getting to lick maybe a spoon with some, cream, uh, some uh, frozen yogurt on it, or uh, how, how tight is that? Can I see it? Yeah. There you go, buddy. Yeah. And so general rule of thumb, you want to be able to get uh, two fingers in here um, on a collar. And this seems, yeah, adequately snug and very, very stylish. I'd probably put this one up a little bit more on the front. I'd probably have this a little bit snugger. There we go. And yeah. And so uh, the Tellington Touch might come up with some ideas, some things that he enjoys doing. And we'll see, and if maybe this helps him settle down and we'll have him up here until he wants to get down, we'll put him down, we'll see if this helps him um, stop pacing quite so much. Um, yeah, now he was also doing some reverse sneezing. I'm pretty sure it was reverse sneezing. You might want to just, if it happens again, the guard said they'd never seen it before. It looks exactly what I've seen a lot of dogs do for reverse sneezing, which is not anything to worry about. But if he does it, I would maybe take out your camera and film a little bit of it so you can show your vet and just have your vet confirm that's the case or maybe there's something else going on. But he did sleep for about two hours. I'm wondering if it was related to that. He felt a little bit more comfortable about that. Um, let me see, what else? Um, one of the things that I like doing is, is uh, tree trails. Since he's going constantly to the left, might be beneficial uh, to have a tree trail that goes like a straight line or a little curves to the right. You wanna get down, buddy? You adjusted himself a little bit. Um, we'll see. And, if, and I'm big on dog consent. So if he wants to pull away, then we let him go away. Um, Generally speaking, dogs really don't like it when you start petting them on top of their head. See, his, uh, he didn't really do it there, but a lot of times their ears flip back. They really like it a lot of times under their chin, on their chest, or on their shoulders. And his back legs are wrestling up a little bit. Let's see if he likes that. But finding out where dogs like to be petted and petting them in those spots, just like if we have a partner that likes to do that. Yeah, I hear what you're saying, buddy. I'm gonna put you down. There we go, let's see what he does. And he's kind of going a straight line. Now he's going back to a left, oh, another straight line. So that seems to have another straight line, more straight line. Seems to be beneficial for him. Now he's going back to kind of a big oval, but he's doing, instead of a tight circle, he's kind of doing an oval circle, kind of like maybe he's, maybe he's in a NASCAR. Um, but that seems to be beneficial for him. And again, things that, that we're gonna find that are gonna be helpful for him, quality of life wise, we wanna continue doing. Um, so yeah, I would definitely, uh, and then for the belly band, when you intrude the belly band, again, I think I talked about this earlier, but get him using that lick that good anxiety shake off, shaking it off is a way of releasing anxiety. So, uh, maybe we, uh, if he likes this, that, uh, or, uh, uh, the belly band, I wouldn't have the belly band and the thunder shirt on at the same time. I mean, we, we put the belly band on the first time. Maybe we're just let hand feeding him, you know, the meal that you just did or letting me know. I'm distracted. I'm not even thinking about that. And the idea is, again, getting him used to it. Most male dogs don't have a problem with it. It's not, it doesn't, it knows there's no pain or discomfort. Um, I thought he was gonna turn right. He did not. 
Um, but uh, so uh, anyways, uh, so the belly band I think would be helpful for overnight uh, for multiple reasons. Um, let me see, I covered so much in the session, there's a whole bunch of little things. Is there anything else you want me to cover? You can always call me, you don't have to, you know. No, I, th I think I wrote down so much. Okay. <laughs> um, I think this was pretty much it. I think w when we put him in this, should we ever lead him to his bed so he knows he can chill or just let him do it? He knows where the bed is, because okay, he's fine he by himself, yeah. yeah. And so, but he is going more in straight lines. I don't know if you noticed since he yeah. put that on, but again, that's the sort of thing you document in your journal. He's going more straight lines, Doc. Is that okay? Doc's like, well, let's have him wearing that thing six hours a day. We're going to listen to the doctor that, for that because I'm not an expert uh, when it comes to neurologic ticks. Um, now, one thing uh, that they put in his medicine in is oral kind of, it's, it's not an injection, but it's in a syringe that they squirt into his mouth, which he didn't like. Now, when he does it, uh, what's that? He never likes it. He never likes it. Well, it's probably bitter. It doesn't have a great taste. Be careful. And we want to do it quickly, but you did it pretty fast, and that can create a little bit more of a, it might, it might catch him off guard. I'm not saying you want to dribble it because you want to get it done pretty quickly, but try not to do it quite as fast as you did. If I always follow it up with a treat or something, he really likes afterwards. So it's kind of like the doctor, you get a shot and then you get a lollipop, a similar sort of principle. Um, all right, so um, listen to your instincts, uh, but also track his, his, his joys and his happiness, the things that he does. Um, we want him to, we want to find, when we identify what those are, we want to basically cur curate and add as many components that we can to uh, expand those and have those happen more frequently. Um, he seemed, he really seemed to like eating his food, which is a good thing. He ate that food pretty quickly. Um, I would also, oh yeah, I mean, uh, you already put this down, but uh, a lot of people when they feed their dog their uh, a food that they come up with on their own, sometimes it doesn't contain, look at that straight, straight line, all the things that the dog needs. And so uh, if that's the case, then maybe we want to uh, check with somebody, and I ch called one of my friends who's a, ver a certified uh, animal nutritionist, and so she gave us a couple of suggestions. So reaching out to that person, maybe doing a consult and finding out are there other things we can add to his food that might have neurological benefits to it. Um, and those sort of things, we want him to be happy and healthy. All right, well, um, this is my little buddy, Gobi, and this is Gobi's accommodation tips to help him and his roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it. You stop that for me? Thanks. You bet. So yeah, I'll put that on my, I'll, be, I'll create a web page for you.